So by the sweet will of our Gurudev, we are still searching for quotes of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Shishi Radharasa Sudhanidi. And we are we're going to the final. We are already in verse number 239. So Gurudev, I wanted to ask you what to read next, actually. So maybe later. We all say, I will listen on this because my get, uh, some guest is here. Please. Yes. Okay. Jai Shri Radhe. So we start from 239. Last time we stopped uh, with the pastimes of a great devotee. So I will read the verse first to get the connection and then comes the quote. Verse number 239, Radharasa Suranidi. There is some supreme secret in the lovely cane grove of Brindavan. which is imperceptible for Narada Muni, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Shukadev. But who alone is able to steal Krishna's heart? Again, there is some supreme secret in the lovely cane grove of Brindavan, which is imperceptible for Narada Muni, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and Shukadev. But who alone is able to steal Krishna's heart? Jai Shri the supreme secret. This supreme secret is his heart's most coveted Brishabhanu Nandini Sri Radha. She is most expert in stealing everyone's heart including that of Sri Krishna. In poor Vara condition, one Saki once personally experienced and described this expertise of hers. O oh, young girl, how blessed is your birth! All people in Braj cry for Krishna, but he is absorbed in your love as a Chataka bird is in the rain cloud and the Chakura bird is in the moon. When I see a wine holding on to a tree, my mind becomes 
confused. When Krishna remembers how you spread out your hair and only cover half of your breasts with your veil, he becomes greatly agitated. He tightly holds my hand when he sees you smiling in a way that reveals your teeth. When your unseen glance enters into his heart, O oh, Saki, and I look again, you have taken him on your lap. Kavi Vijapati sings, O Sundari, I advise you thus. You are the puppet of his heart, and he is an empty body. Without giving up the male consciousness, one cannot enter into the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan's cane groves. Without giving up the male consciousness, one cannot enter into the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan's cane groves. For that reason, Narada, Shuka, Shiva and Brahma, who are not only in male devotee consciousness, but who are also worshipping Krishna in a mood of awe and reverence, cannot enter into this supreme secret. For this, one must accept the mood of a gopi, more specifically, a manjari. In the commentaries on verse 4, 41 and 73 of this book, it is explained in detail why Narada, Brahma, Shiva and Shukadev cannot enter into this supreme secret. In the present age of Kali, though, even the most fallen souls can enter into the supreme secrets of Manjari Bath by the causeless mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So more or less the whole essence is written here in some sentences. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has brought to us fallen souls in Kali Yuga a gift which not even souls like Narada, Brahma, Shiva or Shukadev can have. So that means we have much more mercy than them. Unbelievable, huh? This is really unbelievable, but this is actually our Darya Leela. This is the mercy of our sweet Radha coming through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, handed to us through Panchatattva, all aspects of Radharani. And this is most astonishing.
You can say Radharani will never leave Vrindavan. Yes, that's true. Not in her form, in which she is serving her beloved. But in the same time, she accepts another form to come down to us, to fallen souls like me, who are bereft of intelligence, of a good heart, of love, and all the good things you need to enter in such an abode. We're completely bereft. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has brought us this gift. And here it's explained, especially in a few sentences. Everything is there inside. Actually, I have to apologize. This is not a quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita, but of Chaitanya Chandramrita. <laughs> but it's the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu anyway, so what? <laughs> so there's written in verse 130, On the pathways of whose ear had the wonderful words love of Krishna entered? That's the question. On the pathways of whose ears had the wonderful words love of Krishna entered? Who had known the glories of the holy name? Who had entered the great sweetness of the forests of Vrindavan? Who had understood Sri Radha, who is filled with the most wonderful sweetness of the nectar of pure love for Krishna? Only Chaitanya Chandra revealed all this. He is most merciful. So we are coming to the end of Sri Sri Radharas Sudhanidhi. And again, this point of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming forth. And Srila Anandadas Babaji is wonderfully uh, underlining that point. It begins with the mercy and it ends with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As we start our mantras in the morning, usually with the same thing. What we are meditating on, on the mercy of Panchatattva, on every single person, an aspect of the person. Or if you are not in that position that you got Diksha, then you usually chant before Hare Krishna, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gauravakta before going in the Maha Mantra. Why? Because it all starts with the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Panchatattva. And it all ends also. Because who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? 
you all know so the mercy of Radharani came down to us in so many forms exactly in all the forms we need all aspects we need are there you cannot ask for something more because nothing more needed So if anyone wants to share on this first point, please do so. You have some feelings you want to share or you have some questions, whatever, anytime. So this was the first part, there comes another part. Because my question was, when I first read this, what kind of mercy actually we got? We got the mercy of the connection to the seva of the lotus feet, the most splendid lotus feet which exist. But what exactly is this seva? So the next verse actually in the connection here is explaining nicely verse number 240 and it gives a lot of aspects. How can I become qualified to enter into the festival of the intimate service of Radha and Mohan, who cannot be perceived even by the goddess of fortune? who cannot be approached by the Lord's friends, nor by a Lord Brahma, Narada Muni, Lord Shiva, or Swayam Bhuvamanu, but only by those who accept the mood of the cowherd girls of Brindavan. How can I become qualified to enter into the festival of the intimate service of Radha and Mohan? Srila Anandadas Bhavachi is giving the title The Right to Enter into a Secret Festival of Service. The Right. It is our right to enter. We can have it.
And in the verse it is already described. How? Accepting the mood of the coward girls of Brindavan. More specific, the mood of a mandri or a kinkari. Commentary by Srila Anandadas Babaji. Because reverential devotional service is performed in a mood of respect and awe, it cannot be spontaneous or free from hesitation. And therefore, it cannot be full of perfect ananda or bliss. Braj is the abode of sweetness, where nobody knows Krishna to be the Supreme Lord. Now comes the quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Krishna ke Ishwarana hi jane braja jana. The festival of spontaneous and sweet devotional service mentioned in the text can only take place in Braj. Still, even in Braj, the servants of Krishna have some feelings of respect for him, knowing him to be the son of the king of Braj. The fraternal parental and conjugal mellows are completely sweet and intimate. But, again, of these kinds of devotees, only the maidservants of Radharani are qualified to enter into the festival of Radha and Mohan's intimate devotional service in the Kundra. So how can I become qualified to enter into the festival? By accepting a bhava dea which fits for that service, a sita dea, eternal spiritual body of a manjari or a kinkari, only if I accept this body, then I can enter. Because as we heard before, in the verse before, if we are in a male consciousness, we can never enter. So because all sadhakas are in male consciousness, they cannot enter. And this is the interesting thing also. I was thinking about Panchatattva. Why actually they come as male? Why? Because everyone here is in a male body. They won't accept other authorities, isn't it? So even Radha has to take a male body, like Gadatha. But to come in the Nikunjas and the Nivriti Nikunjas of Brindavan, 
we have to accept a female body. And only in this completely selfless service mood we can enter. We can only accept in that kind of body Radharani's mood, reflect her mood. And this is actually what kinkaris are doing. They reflect. They reflect expertly Radharani's mood, Radharani's aspects. They are all little aspects of the whole aspects of Radharani, part and partials. Like sunbeams are part of the sun. So now we can count one and one together. The right to enter into a secret festival of service is that we accept this female body as a kinkiri or manjuri. So actually what we were offered or are offered in the future depends on each person from Gurudev. Gurudev is handing us the passport here. With this passport, you can enter. You want? You want the initiation? Yes, take it. But you have to want it. That's the point. You can get it if you really want, but you must try, try and try, try and try, and you succeed at last, right? So this is our concept. We take the passport, we try to live what is written inside, that and that mandri. That and that kinkery. Oh, that's me. And then we will enter. We will have the right to enter into a festival of service, not just service, a festival of service. It is not just a service. It is not like you are going to serve a king. You are serving love personified. It is a festival. A festival of emotions. A festival of different lilas. A festival of different sevas you are doing in that. Always fresh. Do we understand what gift we got? Do we really get this? No, because we cannot understand it with the mind. It's not possible. So if you want to really see what gift you got, you have to first go into your Sita Deha and then pack everything. You just, how do you say, uh, put it out of the package. Otherwise, you will just have some idea. Yeah, it's great. It's a great gift. Oh, yes, it's a very, very great box. 
But do we understand what is inside? Impossible to understand, but possible to feel. So feelings are the key. And how can we feel actually? I mean, you could say so many things about feelings, because usually we start up with feelings in our sadhak. What we feel now, maybe we feel some joy because the sun is there, maybe some, I don't know. But this is not the feelings we are talking about. We are speaking about feelings, they are more deep and more high and more broad than we could ever expect here in the material world. So it's a new experience for every one of us. It's like you are a little baby and you didn't experience anything. Now you see for the first time a chipping bird out in the garden. Oh, how nice. And like this, we are looking onto the lilas. We hear from souls like Srila Prabhupada Saraswati and Srila Raguna and other manjuris who made it already and who share their experience with us. So by their mercy, we can have some impression. And now a wonderful thing actually happens. When you got a seed, but you have only dry sand, the seed will be in the sand. It will never grow. But if you put the same seed in a very nice earthen pot and put water on it and let the sun shine on it, then a wonderful thing will happen. It will sprout and it will grow. So the sun is there. It's the mercy, the mercy which is always with us. We have to hide to don't see the sun. Otherwise, the sun is always with us. The seed is there, given by Gurudev. The water is what we are doing now. We are reading and watering the seed with the emotions of the great Acharyas. And the earth in the pot is the association with others who also want to go there. So these are the perfect circumstances that this seed will grow. And if we don't allow, don't allow that other plants, which are unwanted, will take the energy, And we should just watch our pot. Is there some enviness? Is there some something which disturbs the whole scene? And we can ask the gardener that he will take it out, the unwanted.
So what a gift we got. Chaitanya Charit Amrita says, here's the second quote in this verse. Gopachati Krishna Gopi Prayasi Tahara Devi Vanyastri Krishna Nakore Angikara Lakshmi Chahe Se Dehe Krishna Rasangama Gopika Anugahoya Nakoila Bhajana Krishna is of a cowherd's caste. And the cowherd girls are his sweethearts. Krishna does not accept goddesses or other women. Lakshmi wanted to unite with Krishna in her present body, but she did not worship him as a gopi did. So these are also wonderful news. Aren't they? Why? Krishna is a coward boy. He's a very simple person. He don't want to be ha handed like a, a king or, you know, treated like some special person. Oh, you are so great. Oh, my God, and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Please give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Be honest. If you are rich and you sense that people are only coming for you because they want your money, do you like that? Who likes that? No one. We want to be loved because we are what we are, isn't it? So Krishna does want to be loved because he's God, because that's not love, that's a deal, at least mostly. I want something you have. Oh my God, you are so nice. You're so qualified. You're so rich. You are so this and so that. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's not love. So Krishna is a cowherd boy. Very simple. Very simple person. Just interested in exchange of love. So he wants to be served by persons who love him. And who loves him the most? Our Radha. Who can give him everything in one person? Our Radha. But who is expanding in endless forms to serve him endlessly? Our Radha. And for that, she needs our help to expand and expand and expand and give him more pleasure, more joy, more tastes, different kind of tastes. He needs the kinkaris who kick him out of the kunj if he says something wrong. He needs them. And we are in this lucky position. So we can be exactly that. A wonderful expansion of our Radha in a very special form. Sweet looking like her, smelling like her, 
because we were her maha. We have her maha sari and so many other things she gave us because of her mercy. So we smell like her, we look like her, but we are younger. We are the buds, not the flower. So what a wonderful position. By the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are in that position. So are we aware And if not yet, then maybe we could do something more to be more aware. But that's up to everyone. No one can press it. Because love has only one force. We say Rati. Rati is the force of love, but actually what it is, it is Brahma itself. The force of love is love itself. You cannot get rati without prema. <laughs> I think Srila Anandaras Babaji, he actually he, he, he was putting us in a trap with his explanations, in a wonderful, lovely trap. So expertly he describes everything here. He is giving us a clear picture of what kind of mercy we got. I mean, not we, we, we will get, no, no, we got already, it's here. It is with us. In the next verse, there's of course also a statement of Chaitanya Charitamrita. But more interesting, the title here is Taking full shelter. It's so amazing, isn't it? First, he is describing what we got, from whom we got, what exactly we got, what ride we got, what service we, we have, the festival. And now we may think, yeah, but how, how can I really? Take shelter. And now the next title is Taking Full Shelter. Like he could read our thoughts. <laughs> oh, bestower of taste. This is now 241. O bestower of taste, Sri Radhe, I purify my mind, body and words by taking shelter of you, by eating the ambrosial remnants of your food, 
by hearing about your pastimes, by remembering the dust of your lotus feet, and by wandering around in your arbors, singing your divine glories and beholding your form. Here's the answer. How we can take full shelter? Commentary. Firstly, by taking prasad, we maintain our material bodies and by the purifying effects of it, we conquer over Maya. As Uddhava Mahashaya has rightly stated in the Bhagavad 11.646. Relishing Prashad is one of the 64 items of Bhakti. As Srila Rupa Goswami stated in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Yet, the attainment of Brahma and tasting the sweet nectar of the beloved deity's lips, because this is prasad, tasting the nectar of the beloved deity's lips, like Swamini is kissing us, Yet the attainment of Brahma and tasting the sweet nectar of the beloved deity's lips are the main result of taking prasad. Other results are simply concomitant factors. That's amazing. He's describing the highest level of taking prasa. Because in this way, in this moment, when you get this kind of prasad, you have the complete prasad. Because what happens? Radharani only eats what Krishna ate before. So when the kinkaris help Swamini to cook first, then this is given to him. He is taking that food. This prasad from him is given to Radha. This is like they are kissing each other. The remnants of the lips the sliver of the beloved. Of course, Radharani is tasting that kind of prasadam in the highest way you can, because she has the most love for him. That means you get the highest prasad, maha prasad you can get. And this is given to you by Swamini. So this is the real remnants, the real prasad. It's complete. And this is what we want. This is what we want to reach. And Srila Anandadas Babaji is writing, very wonderful, other results are simply 
concomitant factors. Yes, they are connected, but more or less side effects. You are on the way. And it will help you to bring you to this level. Secondly, Sripad wants to engage his ears in always hearing about the sweet pastimes of Sri Radhika. Yes, what we are doing now. But amazingly, the first thing is taking prasad. Although we know the processes, like they are described, everything begins with Shavanam, Kirtanam, and so on. It's not written prasad. But Prabhupada, he was stressing this point so much. No person should ever leave the temple without taking prasad. He was well aware that without getting the mercy, how you can really hear? Especially in this Kali Yuga, mind is completely destroyed. You cannot really hear, but prasad means first the mercy. The mercy is cooling you down, giving you the possibility to listen. Because it immediately takes your strongest material sense and cool it down. And this is the tongue. The tongue always wants to enjoy and talk, right? Always, the whole time. It's the strongest sense. So immediately, Swamini is capturing that sense by giving prasad. So mercy comes first. That's the point. In all processes, and whatever process you want to do, the first thing is mercy. Without mercy, nothing is working. Nothing. You may think, oh yes, I am doing sadhana. Oh my God. Huh? I am chanting every day at least 64 rounds and, you know, I am doing this and that and I'm singing and I'm... Oh. You may think, but you can never ever do it without the mercy. So first prasad. Always. Prasad means mercy, the loving mercy, the mercy which is full of love. And real prasad means you are already completely in the erotic lila because kisses were exchanged, love was exchanged, and you get the remnants. You are already fully inside. If you know or not, doesn't matter. The whole mercy is there. So first prasad. Then, secondly, we hear about the sweet pastimes of Sri Radhika. Sri Shiva Goswami says that having taste for hearing is the most important item of devotion. Kataruje. Grama Sandarva Commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 128. All of the topics of God, topics relating to Srimad Bhagavat, are the best. Why? Because in Srimad Bhagavat, these pastimes are described the loving exchange. Although Radharani is not mentioned there in full name, 
it is very clear that one gopi is very special. And this very special one gopi is Aradhika, our Radharani. So that's why Bhagavad is the best, because it describes Radharani and how she fulfills the desires of Krishna. That's why it's the best. For its words are the most powerful and full of transcendental rasa. Of all the topics in Srimad Bhagavat, the Rasa Lila is the greatest. For hearing it, it makes one attain the highest form of devotion to God, the mood of the gopis, according to Sri Jiva and Sanatan Goswami, and quickly redeems the hearer from the heart's disease of lust. Because now lust will be changed into rati. Surely the devotee who hears about Radharani's sweet pastimes will attain her full shelter. Again, surely a devotee who hears about Radharani's sweet pastimes will attain her full shelter, surely. Surely. Yesterday we heard about this one bath in in the Radhakund. Why we cannot feel immediately Brahma? Huh? When the seed is in the dry sand, the seed is the seed of your Siddhateha. It's in dry sand. How you can feel? You got the mercy, you got the seed, yes, but it cannot sprout. It doesn't have food, no water, no sun, no good earth. That's why it takes time. But don't doubt you got the mercy. Because it's the promise. Krishna is promising, I will give to everyone who takes once a bath in that kund. The same prema like Radha. It's a promise. Do you think he was just saying it just to give us a, a nice story? Some hope? It's a promise because Radharani wants it like this. So it's not possible for him to fail because if Radha wants that, he has to do it. We heard about what he is doing if someone is just saying Radha. He is running behind this person and saying, what I can do for you, I want to give you the best I have. <gasps> the best I have is the service to Radharani's lotus feet. So I will give you that. No doubt that one who takes bath once in her kund will get this present. It's just a question of time, but what is time? A moment in eternity? From our view, 
definitely. We are like some flights who are living just one day. <laughs> Gone. So no doubt, we got the mercy. That's it. No doubt. If we do doubt, we may stop at one point and say, oh no, it's anyway not possible to get it, you know. It's too high, it's too far, it's... Oh. No qualities like this, you know, yes, yes, it's true. We don't have any qualities, yes, but we have one quality, which is not ours, but we can have it any time. And this is the mercy of our Swamini, and the mercy which is coming through Panchatattva, through Guru Mantri, to all these wonderful persons who are on the way, who understood already what this mercy is. We have that mercy available. And this is our qualification. Take the mercy, prasad, and then listen. And by listening about the sweet lilas, the rest will grow. Thirdly, Tripat always remembers the dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet. This includes all her names, glories, pastimes, qualities. In Raganuga Bhakti, the item of smarana or remembrance of Radha and Krishna's sweet pastimes is most important. Srila Narottam Das Thakur thinks. The very life of the mind is smarana, and the most sweet remembrance is the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. This is the goal, and this is the practice, and there is nothing more than this. This principle is the essential truth. So by listening about a wonderful thing all the time, actually it's just normal that Smarana is arising, isn't it? When we had a wish as children, we heard about something we didn't, any, we didn't have any experience from. We were dreaming of that, because we heard so many things, we were dreaming, right? We were like in a film, our own film of thoughts. This is Smarana. We hear about the sweet pastimes, and now the film is starting. We get some pictures inside, how it will look, how Radhakund really looks, with all these wonderful trees and flowers and these creatures and the humming bees and how it is described, we get some inner film and it starts. And the more we hear, the more clear these pictures get. So no wonder that we actually all the time think of Radharani's lotus feet in so many ways. Her glories, her pastimes, her qualities. Like the seven oceans. I mean, only one of these oceans is already enough to meditate the whole life on it. <laughs> her sweetness. 
Not even Krishna can get a clear picture of that, her elegance. Who will understand that? Impossible. So enough to think about and to meditate on. Fourthly, a fourth, fourthly, the fourth point is, Sripad wants to wander all over Radha's Nikunja abodes in Brindavan. As a result of wandering all over Braj, the devotee develops love of Krishna and attains Srimati Radhika's causeless mercy. And this you can do here on the planet. You can go to Braj here, Brajabhumi, Braj on this planet. Or you can also begin to walk over the path in your smart. Sripad glorifies Sri Radha's divine qualities, for that is the best way to attain her mercy, as she declares herself. Amara kata boileye, amara matta hoise. The chanting of the holy name is a must for someone who wants to attain perfection in the present age of Kali. Sri Jiva Goswami says in Bhakti Sandarbha 273, in all the ages, the Yugas, the holy name has the same power. But still, in the age of Kali, the chanting process is especially praised. The Lord, seeing the blight of the fallen souls in the Age of Kali has especially braced this chanting method as the means for the age of Kali. Therefore, it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32, intelligent people worship the Lord in the age of Kali by means of the Sankirtan Yakya. So now comes the beginning and the end. Hearing is the beginning. So chanting and hearing, it's also beginning, but also the end. Because if you really hear the mantra, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then you hear only Lila. Our Gurudev mercifully described us. He gave us some wonderful explanation. What Hare Krishna means when Radharani is embracing Mohan completely. You remember? So it's pure Leela. That's why the chanting is the beginning, but also the end. Because if you chant and remember all the Leelas, then you are already there. And then again, it's just a question of time that your mortal body will drop and in your Sita Deya, you will go on. Because it is already awakened, it is already there, it is inside your mortal body, your sadhak. And then you just, like in the evening, you may pull, pull over your pullover, <laughs> put it out. <laughs> That's it.
So seeing Radha's form can mean worshipping the deity. In that connection, it must be remembered that Pratima Nahe Tumi Shakshat Vrachendra Nandana. That's also a statement from Chaitanya Charitamrita. You are not a statue. You are directly Krishna, the Prince of Braj. Such consciousness will make the aspirant most happy. In this way, Sripad purifies his body, his mind, his words by engaging them in Sri Radhika's service. So you are not a stone sitting there on an altar. You are Radharani and Mohan in a Nikunja here at my home and I'm trying to serve you as best as I can. You are not a statue. You are living. You are here. The mercy is already with you means who is giving you the mercy also has to be here, isn't it? Where the energy is, the source of the energy has also to be, isn't it? There is no energy without source. So where the mercy is, Radha must be there. That's the conclusion. So taking full shelter means, again, O bestower of taste, Sri Rati, I purify my mind body and words by taking shelter of you. First, taking shelter of you. By eating the ambrosial remnants of your food. First, accepting her prashad. By hearing about your pastimes. By remembering the dust of your lotus feet. And by wandering around in your arbors singing your divine glories and beholding your form. Jai Jai Sri Rade. So in this way, we got the mercy. We got it already. It is with us. So it starts and it ends with mercy. It starts with mercy and it ends in the mercy. <laughs> because this prasad, which is the first mercy prasad, you get the prasad, means in the end you worship in the prasad. You are actually one aspect in prasad. Yeah. And this mercy, that we understand this. Mercy works. Mind never, never works. Mercy. Endeavor, after endeavor, we not accept mercy. We don't understand mercy. But without doing some nothing, things happening, 
איזה מעשה. Yes, Guru Dev. You always say without doing nothing, but in my case it's even worse. I am doing things which are obstructing actually. But Without anyway, effort for yourself, you do to maintain the circumstances. I know you very well. You never have endeavor for your benefit. You do endeavor for the benefit of to existence, and that is to do no way. So you receive mercy and you realize mercy and you are a speaker of that realization. For survival, we have to do our material thing is a Kurukshetra and a spiritual thing is a Dharamshetra. So for Realization, you not uh, do uh, endeavor anything, all got by mercy. And for surviving material body under circumstances, your family, you do the Kurukshetra. You work. In the battlefield, you have to do that. So that balance, you very nice example showing to us. Gurudev, now that you are uh, free, uh, I have one question. With, yeah. with what topic we should go on after this uh, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi? You have some suggestion? Will have put some manjali. One is the Eastern Nista and one is the Sarup Nista. Yes, will have put some manjali. We can again do very slowly and very intense. One time, five, one line, five times. Yes. One line, five times. Now I will suggest not easy. Every words to explain. That is the meaning of the Radhara Sudharidi and Vilapusa Manjuli. Till I am not realized, I have to practice the same line. Isthanista and Sarupnista, no diversion from that. We not need any information more than that. <laughs> that navigator will work very smoothly every moment of our life. That is Guru Kripa. Navigator will navigate his job. He can, every moment he will navigate me in my life. And this yes. proved by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is the teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I feel that this is actually really the mercy that we are always, whatever we do, we cannot actually escape anymore. Even if we, we have to do Kurukshetra, everyone has to, to keep the material body to survive this material circumstances in Western world. They have to do Kurukshetra, but we have to very balance 
that Kurukshetra not catch us. We have to come to the Dharmchetra in my Saru consciousness. So what we try to do here is to actually connect these two things. <laughs> the person, one is crying for material thing, one person is crying for a spiritual thing. We have to cry for the Radhika's lotus feet. That's it. Why I have to go for Kurukshetra? Can you show me Adi? That I cannot forget you for the moment. This is the line of the Bhagavad Gita, first line. Who not see that is Dhritarast, blind person, who see they are not blind. Well, the amazing thing is that Krishna was with Arjuna all the time, from beginning on. And he actually was serving him. Sitting underneath. Isn't that amazing? And this is what, what this, this person who was reading the Bhagavad Gita uh, like this from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood that he understood Bhagavad Gita because he was crying. The Lord is serving Arjuna, actually. So he was there with him. From beginning on and this is actually what we were talking about today radharani is with us from beginning on always there and if we do not see that how how we can see her mercy How we can see that she is hugging us also, not only Krishna. And she is arranging all our circumstances that we will find home. That's what I can see in my life now. <laughs> So thank you, Gurudev. Then we will read again Vilap Kusumanjali after finishing Radharasa Sudanidi. And you are all invited to, to give more uh, input if you like. Share your feelings and uh, be part of it of this journeying the ocean of the sweetness of Radharani, all her qualities and her lilas. So thank you very much. My obeisances and loving hugs to all of you. Thank you Gurudev for your mercy. And see you soon.